Hello and a warm welcome to this week's edition of Invest Africa. I'm Bronwyn Nielsen. Risk is part of everyday life and insurance companies are in the business of identifying, measuring and managing this risk. This week we take a look at the role of insurance on the African continent and its role in catalyzing economic growth. Africa's insurance market remains very small when compared to that in developed countries, where this market contributes only 2% to GDP and caters to less than 5% of the population. Insurance is a grudge purchase and is therefore heavily influenced by income levels, which is why the global financial crisis was a drag on the global insurance industry. Apart from low per capita incomes, capital inadequacy, lack of capacity and underwriting expertise are just some of the issues plaguing the African insurance market. But there is still an incentive for companies and investors to be looking into the sector. According to the South African Centre for Financial Regulation and Inclusion, insurance companies in most African markets have traditionally targeted only the top 5% of the adult population. Insurance companies in these markets tend to fight for market share in an already served market and should start to extend their reach. For example, less than 30% of low-income adults in South Africa have any form of insurance, whilst in the rest of Africa, this untapped market could be as much as 40%. An intimate understanding of the economic circumstances is needed for this low-income market, and it'll be interesting to see if sub-Saharan African insurance companies will embrace this new market. It could very well prove to be as successful as microfinancing has been. And joining me in the studio to take a closer look at insurance in Africa is Yaku van der Sant. He's the head of insurance KPMG. Guy Scott, CEO of Aon Risk Solutions and Risto Katola Insurance Analyst SBG Securities. Well, gentlemen, let's just map out the insurance sector in Africa. It obviously is a competitive one, but do we have traction with the, the population as set out in, in our insert when it comes to insurance? Isn't this something that perhaps is for a, a more developed environment when there are greater needs on the table than perhaps insuring yourself against risk? Bruno, I think that is one of the key challenges in Africa at the moment, um, is that there's, there's, um, there's limited means out there. That's why we see the personal lines market taking up very slowly. So at the moment, the market is more around the corporate and commercial areas. Um, we hope that as the middle class is developing these countries, that that will spill through to personal lines insurance as we know it in South Africa. Can we add, Guy, in terms of, of your thoughts? What, what are we facing here? I mean, certainly South Africa is the dominant um, insurance player in the market, um, and so the opportunities lie north of our borders. Um, I think we've got to be very careful when we venture north of our borders. And it's rather surprising that some of the indigenous South African insurance companies haven't made a broader foray on the African continent. Um, the African continent is largely made up of um, your smaller indigenous insurers in country, um, whereas um, effectively the likes of Suntum, um, Hollard to a certain extent has some sort of footprint in Africa, but then they're also beyond that in other emerging markets in terms of India and Pakistan, um, even Australia. Um, but certainly their footprint is not um, in excess of four or five countries um, on the short term side. Um, so to my mind there's huge opportunity um, you see um, the globalization or the regionalization of South African business um, where there are risk requirements um, and requirements um, for um, insurance is of an, of an absolute necessity. Um, and I think from, from that point of view, that is the opportunity. It just depends on which segment you're looking at. Um, certainly, as um, Yako says, personal lines, um, commoditized business, um, I think uh, with the um, look to consumerism, um, you are getting more and more traction in that segment. So I do support your view on that, um, on that point. Rista, would you say the, the South African insurance companies are late to market when it comes to the African opportunity? I, I don't think so. Now, first we need to realize that this market is still not very big, okay? So mm -hmm. the, the non-life insurance industry in the rest of Africa, the total size is about the same size as the South African industry on its own. On the life insurance side, the rest of Africa is actually, I think it's about one sixth of the size of South Africa alone. Mm. So particularly on the life insurance side, in some ways they're very early entrants still. On the non-life side, which these guys have mainly been talking about, there the market is a little bit more devoured because anywhere you've got industrial production or assets, somebody needs to insure them. 
But in a lot of these countries, they also have localization rules, which means that it has to be underwritten through a local player. Um, you know, South African companies are, are looking at Africa a lot. Uh, it's just maybe a bit early to be expecting them to make billions of rands there because sure. the profit pool just isn't big enough. The localization rules must be a challenge, specifically because they must differ territory by territory. I think localization is not so much of a problem in, in, in most of the developed world. Um, you need to, to be registered in country as a registered insurance company to do business there. So it's nothing different in Africa than South Africa. Um, so most of the companies will be looking at either forming uh, new operations there and applying for licenses or to, through mergers and acquisitions, acquire licenses. Um, I think the greater challenge is that there are certain reinsurance capacity constraints in, in Africa. Um, and also forced layoffs to local reinsurers. In fact, I strongly sh have a view that whoever puts down the greatest capacity in Africa will be the real winners. There's a lot of business that's leaving the continent at the moment because of a lack of capacity. Now, if you can bridge that gap, um, uh, needless to say, you should benefit from the, the business. Guy, I just want to come back to the yeah. names that you were throwing out. If you categorically had to say this is the leader, the lead player, on the African continent, who would it be? And not Aeon. You can't, yeah. you can't. Yeah. We've, we've got to put some Chinese, we, we, we've got to put some Chinese walls in yeah. here. We are in the intermediary space, so we have a, a good footprint from an intermediary perspective, yeah. so we don't underwrite risk. We merely play a risk consulting and intermediary role. Um, so your, your um, big indigenous players, certainly Hollard have a good footprint, um, mutual and federal to a lesser extent, more in the Southern Africa mm. region. Um, so um, Namibia um, and Botswana and Zimbabwe, um, you've got then some of the global players, you've got the likes of Chartis um, who are in Zimbabwe, um, Kenya and the Middle East, um, so outside of the boundaries of, of um, Africa, um, but certainly very narrow footprints at this time. Um, and that is the opportunity. Do you agree with the names being thrown out there from an investment case perspective, Risto? Yeah, um, I, I, I do. I, mean, I just want to go back to the earlier point about reinsurance that Santam has been speaking about that quite a lot yes. in terms of rather than establishing a presence in every small re, small country, rather offer reinsurance capacity from South Africa across the continent. So you let the local insurers basically chase the business and so on, but Santam will put its balance sheet and its technical expertise on the line. So I think that's not a bad strategy yeah. of increasing your presence in Africa, acting as a reinsurer for the local players. You so want so to so add to, to good, that point, Jeffrey? No, no, I think it, it, it's one of the strategies. Um, only time will tell whether it's really that successful. Our, our research to date shows that Africans are quite interested in brands in, in their countries. Um, so we do believe that if you establish uh, one or two of the global brands in country, you will benefit even more so than reinsurance. But clearly reinsurance is a strategy. It's something that has been applied by Santom quite uh, successfully over the last couple of years. Um, the thing is there, you will always compete then with regional reinsurers, professional reinsurers, and, and, and the, the likes of uh, Africa Re springs to mind there, who in a way is protected by many countries having a full session to them. Um, there's also PTA Re, there, there's a couple of them that, that, that are there that, that, that do have dominance. Um, and then, needless to say, with reinsurance, unless you've got a real strategic alliance with your, your sedents, you are following their fortunes. So you need to be very careful in who you pick in that market space. Um, but it is a strategy, and it is one of uh, sometimes big strategies. Guy, you wanted to take that thought yeah, further I think, as well? Um, South Africa is a hub for Africa in terms of providing that additional capacity. And whether it's through primary yeah. insurance markets or reinsurance markets, it, that is a reality and an opportunity, and it's happening. Um, I think um, South African business, which is regionalizing, um, they want to have structured programs which meet their risk profiles yeah. and their needs, and therefore, and their, the underlying security as well. But I think we've got to be very careful that we um, don't ignore the local insurance companies, um, the expression, and we're proudly South, South African, so we don't like externalized yeah. premiums to international markets where we've got capacity in South Africa. So it's the same factor for whether you operate in Kenya or in Nigeria or any other sort of African territories. They like to see their 
um, their capacity taken up in the first instance. But I think that's where South Africa can, can support the region in providing that additional capacity on your um, substantial risks. And there are certain risk categories um, like the petrochem or mining industry where in-country um, capacity is not available. And that's where we can certainly support the region in providing that mm. capacity. What we're seeing from the likes of an old mutual and a Sunlum mm. in the African space? Well, Sunlum's got a very broad presence in Africa. Yeah. I mean, Suntum's actually quite a narrow presence, but Sunlum, the parent, mm. uh, is in Ghana, Nigeria, Kenya, Uganda. I mean, they've they, they got, probably them and MMI have the two broadest footprints in Africa. Alt Mutual has recently stated that they want to increase their presence in Africa. Now, Alt Mutual's always been quite an aggressive company once it sets its mind on something. So I'm assuming... Can they play catch up then? Yeah, I mean, there are still some acquisition opportunities in Africa. I mean, uh, for example, in East Africa, you've got a company like Jubilee Holdings, which mm. is quite a big player. Uh, there's a number of listed insurance companies in, in West Africa. So, I mean, there, there's still room for Old Mutual to probably acquire a presence in a lot of these markets. That, that tends to be its style. Um, at the moment, Sunlam and, uh, and, and Old Mutual both make about half a billion rand a year in Africa. Now, that, that's a bit flattering because it's really all in Namibia, Botswana, and Zimbabwe in Mutual's case. The um, rest of Africa, places like Ghana, Kenya, you're doing well if you're making 20, 30 million rand a year. So it's small. The, the last thing I want to mention on, on, on those companies is, even though they're life companies, quite a few of them are talking about yeah. maybe acquiring short-term yeah. presence in Africa because that industry is a slightly more developed one. So basically buying a short-term insurance presence to get your brand out there, to make some distribution relationships, and then roll out life insurance at a later stage. And, and that's probably a strategy that a number of companies yeah. are mm -hmm. deploying, where you've got to go in with a short insurance arm and short term yeah, insurance, and then the life will follow once there's traction. Absolutely. Look, the rest of Africa is very different to, to South Africa, where we've got a majority of life assurance versus short term. The rest of Africa is just the inverse, where short term makes up up to 90% of the market, and, and life only 10 I think for life you need personal insurance to kick on, and that's a bit that's not there. I think one of the greatest challenges in Africa is probably consumer confidence in insurance products. Um, you know, there, there has been certain um, territories where, due to the devaluation of their, their currency, three zeros have been chopped off. Now, if you've put away money in, in life insurance products for years in the hope of getting that, that nice payout, and now all of a sudden your, your money is diminished, it doesn't do a lot for, for confidence. Or well, for the industry as a whole, the Absolutely. perception. Mm. I just want to add that um, Old Mutual and Sunlum have got the opportunity of having short-term arms as well, Mutual yeah. and Federal, Old Mutual, and so their expansion off the back of both um, classes of business. Um, similarly, Sunlum, Suntum can have that, that, that strategy. Um, but then I think you've also got the bank assurance factor um, through um, ABSA. Um, Standard, Bank. Them, Standard Bank. Standard um, Bank. Certainly the bank assurance models will, 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 will prevail. Um, and they have, a, in terms of financed assets, I mean, that's important in terms of um, un sort of securitizing um, that debt, um, the insurance aspect to that. And I think from, from, from that point of view, um, that is the opportunity off the bank assurance models. But uh, um, certainly um, where you do have a, a good footprint, um, you've, um, you can replicate best practice um, and adapt to local geographic need and requirements. We're going to come back to the bank assurance models right after this short <laughs> break. As I said, we're taking a quick break, more Invest Africa when we return. Stay tuned.